All right, hey, run out there in banjo land. Mike Heading here. Got another little mini banjo lesson for you today. This time we're going to kind of talk about chord theory. How we take notes from a major scale and build a major chord, and then how do we modify that major chord to make kind of more advanced chords you might run into. So this is really important stuff. Um, it's stuff that you can use in lots of different styles of music. We're going to go over how to make minor chords, how to make major seventh chords, how to make minor seventh chords. And it all is based out of first knowing how to build a major chord and then modify it. So I'll, I'll break the whole thing down right now. Here we go. Okay, so let's get into the lesson. Since the banjo is tuned to open G, let's start by talking about how the chords relate to G and how to build a G chord. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we need our major scale, the G major scale, because that's where we're going to get our notes to build the chords we want. So let's just start with the easy G major scale. I'll play it real slow. We're going to play the open third string. Then we're going to play the second fret on the third string. Then we're going to play the open second string. First fret, second string. Open first string. Second fret, first string. Fourth fret, first string. And then either your open fifth string or fifth fret, first string. And there's lots of different ways to play these notes depending on how many open strings you use or how, fat, how far up the neck this way you want to uh, go, but this is the easiest one to start. So let's do it again. And don't worry too much about what you're doing with your right hand. You can play it all with your thumb or, or middle finger, whatever works. Let's go backwards. give each of those notes a number. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we're back to one. So one, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, because we're going to use those notes and numbers to build different chords. So first, we're tuned to an open G. So we actually have three notes of that scale. G, B, and D. So if we look back to our scale, it's the one, it's our first note. It's the th third note in the scale, so one, two, three. And then we've got the fifth note, one, two, three, four, five. So we've got the th first note of the scale, the third note, and the five. So the one, three, and five. And those are the three notes that build a major chord. So it doesn't matter what key you're in, if you want to find a C major chord, you're going to find you're going to find the C major scale, find the one, three, and five of that scale, and you can build a C major chord. So really important. Again, if you if you convert everything to numbers, then it doesn't matter what key you're in. So that's a really handy tool is converting everything to numbers, and then you can move it around to whatever key you want. Okay, so one, three, and five is building our major chord. One, three, five. Always go back to your scale if you if you need to. Okay, one, three, and five. And then we've got a, you know, again, another root on the top. Okay, so let's look at our movable G chord. We've got third finger on the fifth fret of the fourth string. That's our G, so our one. We've got our second finger on the fourth fret of the third string. That's our B, our third. And our first finger's on the third fret of the second string. That's our fifth. That's the D. And then we've got a root on the top. So our high, high G on a pinky up on the fifth fret of the first string. So we got one, one, three, five, G major chord. And each of those notes in the chord is going to kind of affect the chord in a different way. So obviously, and we can modify those notes to make different chords. Okay, so obviously with our root, we're just going to keep that note the same. So our G note. That's going to be kind of our foundation of the chord. All the other notes are kind of based on the tension or how far they are away from that G note. And so, so everything kind of relates back to that root note, so the one. So that's really important. And the first one we're going to modify is the third. So they, sometimes they call that the color tone because it's going to determine whether we have a major or if you flat the third got minor. So that's sometimes why they call it the color tone because we can make it happy or sad or spooky, whatever you want to call it. 
And so all I'm doing is I'm taking that third, the B, and I'm flatting it a half step. So dropping it one half step in pitch. So from four to three. And again, you have to change the fingerings a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm taking off my second finger and barring the middle two strings with my first finger. And it's, it's good to remember the position, but more importantly is remembering to make a minor chord, you flatten the third. Because then wherever you know those chords, you can find which one of those is the third and flatten it. And you can have a, you know, you can find a minor chord really quickly. So again, there's two ways to do it. You can either memorize all the shapes and the chords, or you can just think in terms of how do I modify those numbers to create the chords I want. And then you just find the notes. So we flatten that third note to make it minor. So that's how we do a minor chord. And again, it doesn't matter where you move it. Anytime I flatten a third, a one, three, and five, and I flatten it, so one flat third, five is a basic minor chord. Okay? So we need, there's a couple other notes that we can modify. Um, another really common one is the seventh tone. So that's another one of the color tones. The third and the seven are the color tones. So up here on our G string, let's do it on the high first string. So we've got our root. Our seventh was actually that fourth fret. And we can either flatten that note or play it natural. So we can either play the fourth fret or the third fret. So let's start with the flatted seventh because that's more common. So that's how we get a G7. So now I've brought my third back to major and I'm flatting that seventh note. So instead of the fourth fret, I'm playing the third fret. And how I'm playing that with my left hand is I'm taking my pinky off and then I'm barring the top two strings with my first finger. So that's a, G, a G7. So again, anytime you want to make a, a dominant seventh chord, so a G7, you take the seventh note and you flatten it. So you got one, three, five, flatted seven. That's the combination of numbers to create a seventh chord. So what if we play with a major seven, so a regular seven? So sometimes you'll see that as G, M, A, J seven, or G with a little triangle seven. So that's a G major seven. It's not quite as common in, in especially in bluegrass, but it's probably not as common as a dominant G seven chord. But how we do that one is we're gonna, we're gonna take our third finger and move it to the fourth fret of the first string. And then we're gonna reach our pinky all the way down to the fifth fret of the fourth string. So hear how that sounds? So that's major seven. And then I can flip it. That's dominant seven, so G seven. So major seven. So that chord is one, three, five, and then regular seven. So that's a, a good one to know as well. So you can also play the sevenths on the bottom if you want. And again, you, once you figure out how to modify the chords, you can find the fingerings that work, or you can do the G7 on the bottom. Okay, so remember, G major seven is one, three, five, regular seven. So what about minor seventh? So if we flat the third and flat the seventh, we've got a minor seventh chord. So that's one, flat third, five, and then flat seven. So you can see how they're all based on the major chord shape, or at least in my opinion, that's the easiest way to think about it. Otherwise, you have to remember all these different shapes and where do I use that and what, you know, if you think of one, three, five, and then how do I modify those notes to add or to change the chord into the, the more advanced chord I want. So that's one flat third, five, and then flat seven. You'll see that a lot in pop music or, or Beatles tunes use a lot of minor seventh chords. Lots of, lots of jazz chords use minor seventh, um, or jazz songs use minor seventh chords. That one's really popular. Another one that's not quite as popular, but you can still do it, is a minor with a major seventh. So that's G, flat third, five, and then regular seven. So again, it sounds a little goofy, but you might, you might run into that chord at some point and it's good to know. And again, once you think of, okay, how do I modify those color tones? It, it becomes easier to think about how to use that or how to come up with it, even if you're not going to use it that much. So really important, remember, just modifying those, those color tones to create the chord we want. 
So that's how you modify the color tones. And again, I would try these, try these in all in you know all your popular you know shape or chords that you're using. You know, again, th that's why I'm doing it out of the movable shape, so you can move it around. You know, if you need D minor seven or whatever it is, you'll be ready. Okay. So last one we can modify, and this one's not a color tone, but we can modify the fifth. So we can either, with the fifth, we can either raise it a half step or lower it a half step. And if we raise it a half step, we get what's called an augmented chord. That's with the fifth raised. So how I do that one is actually kind of, you have to kind of modify the fingers again, but our fifth is that third fret. So we're raising that note. So now we've got one, three, and then sharp five, and then fifth, uh, and then root on the top. So there's a couple different ways you could do that. I mean, you could do it this way or this way. Just, you know, find out what feels comfortable. You just have to raise that fifth note a whole step. And then the other one is if we, we do a minor third and a minor fifth, a flatted fifth is a diminished chord. And then sometimes you actually put a seventh, a flatted seventh on top of that, and you actually flat the seventh note one more to actually a sixth. So that's a diminished seventh. So what diminished is, is that you, you're basically flatting all the notes. So if you had a seventh chord, one, three, five, and flat seven. So I'm basically taking all those notes except the root and flatting them. So I've got my four goes to a three, my three goes to a two, and my three on the top goes to a two. So a little confusing on how you have to finger it, but um, the, probably the easiest way is take your pinky and put it on the fifth fret of the low string, second finger on the third fret of the, of the third string, and then you bar the top two strings at the second fret. That's a diminished seventh chord. So you're, again, you're taking all your your seventh notes, or your regular dominant seventh chord, and you're flatting those notes. So that those are basically kind of the basic modifications to the major chord. All the other ones, you know, a G6, are taking those basic just one, three, and five, and then adding another note on top of that. So if you want a G6, it'd be one, three, five, and then six. So you have to figure out, again, figure out how to change it. But you can always go back to your scale. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I need an, in this case, it's an E note. So you can grab it up here. And then I can, again, you have to change, figure out what fingers you need to change. And the problem with on banjo, the last thing I'd say about, about doing some more advanced chords, especially when you need more uh, notes than strings you have, banjo doesn't have very many strings. So sometimes we have to even skip a note or choose, you know, if we have five notes to play or six notes, sometimes we can't play all of them. So sometimes we have to let other people in the band play some of the notes and that just takes practice. So again, with all these, with all these chords and more advanced chords, sometimes you might see it as just, for example, like a G7, I might just play the three, the five and the seven. And I might let the other, the other people in the band play the low G or, or I, you know, again, you can leave out some of the notes, and part of that just takes practice on seeing which notes you can leave out. Okay? So hopefully that gives you some stuff to work on. Again, start with the major chord. One, three, five. It all is based on that. And then we're either flatting or adding color tones, adding the seventh. And then with the diminished or augmented chords, we're flatting or sharpening that fifth note. So it all is based out of that major chord and the one, three, and five. So... Really important stuff to know. Okay, hope you hope this helps. All right, good luck.